Please note that the meeting is being made available to the public through a video and audio broadcast. The conservation the Comcast government access channel for broadcast at future dates. Comments made in open session will be recorded. So, um, who is present? Richard Holland, I'm I said my name, Art Edgerton. Rick Madden. Scott Clown. Paul Clark. Chairman Canard. Well, we go on the first chairman at 4, 740. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> 740. Yeah, 730. 730. It's not in the right order. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hey, you know. Recommendation for commission. That we reorganize, that you will put into consideration, Sharon back and Mayor of the Chairman. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? We seconded. Okay. So we have any discussion? What? Any discussion? I think it was so good to wait until um, we get our board together. Just, I mean, Sharon's credit is probably the right person, but we have two other seats that need to be filled. Yeah. Be for real. I agree. So, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 No? Abstain. I don't vote. I'd like to move that we appoint Scott Lawson as vice chair. Second. We have a motion to second that and vote. Aye. 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 If I could vote. <laughs> so, I would say. Ready to take over? Because I'm not really up to speed yet. Yeah, so so we can get you up to speed. Sorry, everybody. This is literally my first night here, so um, <laughs> I'm just trying to get up to speed with everything. So it looks like we had a 640 meeting, right? We're on track with 740. I mean, 740. So we are going to, um, I don't know if we have an original. Oh, you did get uh, they've been out in the field this last couple, three weeks. So I think we really need to hear from Brad and the law uh, as to what has been accomplished out in the field, where we are and where we agree and where we don't agree. It's kind of bring us up to, up to speed here. But it's been three or four weeks since the last time we were met. And there's been a filing since then, right? Or a change of a change of some sort during sure, that period of time. Through those. Would it be okay if I grab the easel behind you and sure. reference if we need it? But it would hurt. Mm -hmm. Wednesday met with Lenore White of Weapon Strategies to review the the items that we had um, some disagreement on and, and to need some further review. Um, prior to that meeting, we we have let me step back for a second because it has been a little bit of time we do have members of the audience that may not have been here before. We've submitted an ANRAD application to confirm the, the location of wetland resource areas protected under the uh, state weapons protection regulations in town of Kendall Wetlands Bylaw. That, that includes boring vegetative wetlands as delineated on the plan. We have also located an isolated vegetative wetland uh, that was up for discussion. So we had basically uh, two areas of wetland resource areas on the plan. 
ask for the Conservation Commission's confirmation through the NRAP process. In addition to those vegetative wetlands, there's a flood zone that's, a, that's located on the site. It's a coastal flood zone. It, uh, it's referred to as land subject to coastal storm flowage because it uh, originates from the North River, which originates from the ocean. And that is at an elevation. It's a set elevation by the FEMA uh, agency. And that's been shown on the plan uh, located here. I believe it's elevation eight feet. Um, so that's another resource area. Not a delineation in the field, but a topographic uh, delineation. And that's shown on the plan that's done by survey. Since the, we presented the ANRED application, Lenore did review the wetlands line and had a recommendation to, to move one of the boarding vegetated wetland flags landward, which we did, and we've included it on the plan. Uh, we also had two areas of discussion that we looked further into. There's a, there's a stream that originates within a ponded area here in the, between the A and B series wetland and flows out to the marsh system that's associated with the North River. That stream is shown on the U.S. Geological Topographic Map as a straight blue line which designates a perennial stream. However, we've reviewed the stream through the June, July, and even now, and it's fully dry, and we've made the determination that it's an uh, intermittent stream. Uh, we've also reviewed that in the field and took some more uh, data to show the commission uh, that it is an intermittent stream. And Lenore can give you some more information on her findings. Um, but I also did get the North River Commission, uh, North River Commission Protective Order map. I got that this afternoon, which, we, which I can provide to the commission. It's a totally different set of regulations, not subject to the wetlands protection regulations or the, 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 the wetlands bylaw. But the North River Commission, North River Protective Order map does show that the North River uh, corridor falls within the area closest, I'm sorry, closest to the marsh system, which is out in this area. Uh, so that the stream coming from the ponded area, coming down to the marsh system, at some point it's within that North River protective order. We haven't located that on the plants, nor, nor would we for an ANRAD to this uh, commission. But it does show that the uh, stream is not within the North River corridor, at least the portion of gradient of, uh, and shown on the plan. So we have done research and some findings to confirm that it's an intermittent stream. Also during our site review, we looked at the isolated vegetative wetland that I delineated as part of the original delineation. Uh, that area showed signs of puddling, water stained leaves, and it has a dominance of wetland vegetation in it. The purpose of us locating the isolated vegetative wetland is so that we identified it to the commission uh, to confirm that it's not a bordering vegetative wetland or it, it isn't another resource area such as isolated land subject to flooding. It's not jurisdictional under the state regulations or the town of, town of uh, Pembroke Wetlands Bylaw. Um, as you remember on the High Street AMRAD that, we, that I was involved in uh, a few months or so ago, uh, the Pembroke Conservation Commission does not regulate isolated vegetative wetlands. It's not something that's a uh, resource area that's protected under the town by. It's certainly not something that's protected under state regulations. And it's uh, something that we have confirmed as not being uh, an isolated land subject to flooding, not boring vegetative wetlands, and therefore not subject to the bylaw. We also looked at that in the field, did some soil augering, and actually the soils within that area were not hybrid, uh, so they don't they don't have evidence that shows that the area holds water long enough to create hybrid soils. So that's something that uh, Lenore can describe to you as well. So since that time, since our meeting, we've provided some additional information. We've updated the site plan to take off that C series uh, isolated vegetative wetland that's not jurisdictional, and we have located the limit of, of uh, land. Uh, land set the coast of the storm flowage. Boring vegetative wetlands have never really been at, at any dispute or disagreement. And the intermittent stream that's within the boring vegetative wetlands, we've determined that it is intermittent. So at that point, 
to ask any questions before Lenore has anything to add, but um, it's fairly simple for the commission at this point. You're, you're mm -hmm. confirming ordering vegetative wetlands as requested. Um, the main work in there is that a herring passage to any upper areas? Hopefully not, because it's so dry that. That's what I'm saying. So right. no, it's not. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't I, think I, it is. I, if they get up, they die. They die on the way out. They die on the way out. Pond is dry as well. Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I agree with you, it's dry. It's the soil. Any Thank you, Bob. For the record, my name is Lynn Wright. I'm a professional wetland scientist with Wetland Strategies, and I'd like to just go over some of the findings that I've made on the property. As Brad pointed out, they have filed an ANRAD. The ANRAD was very specific, though. It was not to confirm the status of the streams, it was not to talk about whether or not the site was in the north. Commission. It didn't even really mention whether or not there was a flood zone on the property and requested confirmation of that flood zone. So my review initially focused on the edge of the bordering vegetated wetland, which is now accurately shown on this plan. The other resource area that was identified in the ANRAD was this isolated vegetated wetland, which was a small area isolated from the other areas. I did agree that it was isolated, and I did agree that after computations um, prepared by the applicant that it was too small to qualify as isolated land subject to flooding under the State Act. So under the State Act, the only confirmation you're being requested to do is the edge of the bordering vegetated wetland. The isolated vegetated wetland, though, may be jurisdictional under your bylaws. The town of Pembroke has a wetland bylaw, and in there it describes vernal pools. And the definition of vernal pools is an area that contains 200 cubic feet, a pretty small area, and contains evidence of breeding acti activity. So this isolated wetland that's now not shown on this plan did, in fact, have the capacity to contain 200 cubic feet of water, some 800 cubic feet of water, I think the total was. And regarding whether or not there's any evidence of breeding, when we were out there last week, I didn't find anything. However, it's dry. It's not the time of year when you would find any evidence out there. Mm -hmm. So that's something I think that needs some discussion about whether or not this is a practical, routine matter where you folks confirm these things off-season or don't confirm them off-season. Something to think about. Regarding the North River Commission, Brad has just um, found a map, which is great, because I've been trying to get my hands on a map of that, and I couldn't find it, and it's not on here. So, and it's not within your jurisdiction. But in terms of the stream, whether or not it's a stream, that becomes an issue. Not that that was asked to be confirmed, and I would recommend that you don't confirm the status of that stream, because number one, it was never requested. Number two, if it does fall within this North River Commission, it's exempt from the Rivers Protection Act. The Rivers Protection Act has certain exemptions in it, and one of them is areas within the um, scenic rivers. And that's because the uh, riverfront area protects a 200 foot corridor around perennial streams. But the North River Commission has a 300 foot corridor. So when the regs were drafted, it didn't make sense to sort of have a 200 foot under the state and a 300 foot under the North River Commission. So that's why it was exempted. So my advice to you would be to confirm the uh, edge of the border of vegetated wetland and also to um, discuss whether or not that isolated vegetated wetland would be something that you would confirm. Because by my read of the definition, I would say that that isolated vegetated wetland meets your definition of a vernal pool. But I don't want to tell you how to interpret your bylaws and I don't have any other experience with maybe other cases that you folks may have decided whether or not you made that determination. How close is this vernal pool area to the proposed construction site? Uh, well, there's no proposed construction. We're only okay. looking at the resources. <coughs> and it was, I don't know, some 20, 15, 20 feet off that bordering vegetated wetland. It's located in this general area, and it certainly shows on earlier plans. These plans also state that the stream is intermittent, but 
once again, I, I would advise the commission not to make a determination as to whether it's intermittent or not, because we don't know whether it's exempt. If, if it's in the North River, it's exempt. And where that North River Commission line is, is not shown on here, and frankly, we don't need to know purposes of the end round. Clear as mud, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, well, no, may I ask a question? Certainly. Um, you had made a suggestion that it's dry right now. When would you think would be a better time to get a better analysis? In the springtime. In the when spring? you would find evidence of breeding. You know, you're looking for breeding evidence. That's egg masses, that's water that has some of the uh, amphibians in there, or the macroinvertebrates. So that's the time of year that natural heritage, too, would look for someone to um, find evidence of vernal pool species. Vernal meaning spring, that's the time when you would find evidence of breeding it. I understand there was an application of some, or some information submitted to natural heritage program, so they may weigh in on that. How did you, um, Rick Madden, how did you determine that it was um, over 200 and possibly 800? Um, Mr. McKenzie, Brad McKenzie, who's a professional engineer, submitted calculations okay. showing the topography and the bathymetry yep. of this area, and the volume um, was calculated to be some, I don't forget what it was, 0.19 acre feet, which translates into about 850 cubic feet, which is well above your yep, 200. <laughs> Thank you. Can I ask Brad to uh, want some rebuttal? Want to, you have, you want to, you, you, I mean, everything's as clear as mud to most of us, I believe, right now. So maybe you want to have a, have a say to see. I'm sure. Let's go at it more of the easier way. Let's go look at it more of um, what we can see and observe in common sense wise. A vernal pool would have to fall within a wet, right? Vernal pool, you, you've all seen them. They're, they're depressions. You can usually see a nice bold out area, water staining. Sometimes they're even holding water. Sometimes during the summer, uh, they fall within a wetland. If it's, if it's an open, if it's a ponded area, there's an openness to it, and then you have a wetland fringe around it. This is just a vegetated wetland. It's not even, let me step back. It's a vegetated area. It's not, as we looked in the soils uh, last week, it doesn't even have hybrid soil, so therefore it's not even a vegetative wetland. So my position is that you can't have a vernal pool that's not, it has to, first it has to sit in a wetland. Um, furthermore, it's, it, it probably holds like this much of water as far as what you can see in, this, in the puddling. It's not going to hold water long enough to meet your definition. The definition of a vernal pool under your bylaw, if you, if you like, I have it here, we can read it. But it has to have scientific evidence. It has to have the criteria to, to be a, a vernal pool. This is just an area that has evidence of puddling. It has wetland vegetation. Further observation of the soils reveals that it's upland soils. Uh, it's not even a vegetative wetland. So therefore, it's not a resource area, and the vernal pool uh, is non-existent. Could, could you give us that definition? Sure, let's read, read it. Or? The term vernal pool shall include, in addition to scientific definitions found in the regulations under the Wetlands Protection Act, any confined basin or depression not occurring in existing lawns, gardens, landscape areas, or driveways, which in most years hold water for a minimum of two continuous months during the spring and or summer, contains at least 200 cubic feet of water during some, during some time during most years, is free of adult predatory fish populations and provides essential breeding and rearing habitat functions for amphibians, reptile, or other vernal pool community species, regardless of whether the site has been certified by the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife. So first off, my position is that you have to have a, if it's a vernal pool, it has to be in a wetland resource area that's protected by the town of Pembroke Wetlands Bylaw. They don't protect isolated wetlands, so it would have to fall within a bordering vegetated wetland or a riverfront or a bordering land subdivision, something along those lines that you protect. Um, the can I, can I the, the question criteria for one, one more point, the right criteria that it holds two, 200 cubic feet of water, that has been shown because we did the isolated land subject to flooding calculations that show that it doesn't hold a quarter acre foot of water. 
to make the um, state's definition of isolated lands have been flooding. So basically what you're saying then is any depression, any divot that's throughout the site that's more than 200 cubic feet of water is going to be a vernal pool. So throughout Pembroke, any area that puddles that has 200 cubic feet of water is now going to be a vernal pool, regardless if it's in a, in a vegetated wetland or not. I don't think the town has ever done that. I, I don't think it's something that you're looking to, to do because it would open up a huge can of worms. I have a little confusion in my mind right now because vernal pools, and I'm trying to recall from other times, that for a vernal pool to fall under conservation jurisdiction, it has to be in a wetland. But a vernal pool can be in an upland, but it's not under our jurisdiction. It falls under Boy, the health, it fell, fell under something. I remember something a number of years ago that way. So a vernal pool can be without, not in the wetland, but it wouldn't be under conservation uh, control. If, am I right, wrong, um, or am I just con totally confused? Just to clarify, Brad read your definition, and there's nothing in the definition that says must be within a resource area. I'm still, con I'm still confused, but I'm more confused. I'm confused back where I was. I don't think Pembroke Conservation Commission ever regulated wetlands that weren't. But they they have to be a vegetated wetland, a boring vegetated wetland. I don't know of any instances where the commission has regulated vernal pools in upland areas. Oh, yeah. There is a definition of a vernal pool, I guess. Isn't that what it is? It's a body of water containing 200 square feet or more. It doesn't have to be in the Look it up. Google it. Of course. Yeah. Come on, Brad, just like there, are, there are vernal pools not in the wetland in Pembroke. I just read it to you, sir. I know. Would you like to hear it again? No, I just wanted okay. to see what the Google would say a vernal pool actually is. That's how the town defined it. It just was really brutal to listen to that. That was like the worst argument. I'm sorry. I think it would be something that you may want to think about delaying. Um, until the springtime when we can get out there again. I understand an application that's been filed and it will most likely come before you as a notice of intent in some way, shape, or form. That may, you know, take us into the spring, possibly, I don't know, but it's something that many other towns do delay the confirmation until it's time when you might find something. And vernal pools, they come and go. I mean, any one year, they, there could be enough groundwater, enough precipitation for them to persist. That, you know, other years, last year, for instance, in a drought, there was probably a lot of vernal pools that didn't function because they simply dried up. That's just the nature of vernal pools. They are temporary. Well, so we don't make this too confusing because I think it seems to be going that way. What we've asked for is the Conservation Commission to approve the ANRAD and we've delineated the water and vegetated wetland I don't think that has any uh, uncertainty to it. The town of Pembroke does not protect isolated vegetated wetlands. Am I correct on that? Correct. Yeah. There's, not, there's no definition. You do have a definition. <coughs> right, I know. Let's just move baby steps. Yeah. So we have water and vegetated wetlands that we've asked for the commission to confirm. We have. Uh, we have the C-Series wetland that we've taken off because, one, it isn't a vegetated wetland, and two, the Conservation Commission does not protect isolated vegetated wetlands. I think we're in agreement on, on that point. If, if there's any questions there, let, let me know on that. Is that right, Bobby? I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Lenore's yes and no because she's that much closer to what's what's going on. I did not find any definition in your bylaw for isolated and vegetated wetlands. Isn't that why we hire the expert? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what she's expert. Yeah. <coughs> definition. So therefore, not protected. Right. No, uh, apparently, apparently, there's no protection. Right. Right. Between you, uh, do I detect that perhaps you want us to approve a a? a, a uh, what well, actually what you asked and not the other things we found. Uh, we, we can come up with what we agree on and what we don't agree on. We aren't, take, we aren't saying one thing one way or the other. And as it comes up further on down the road, we'll have to face that part. Is that what I, I think you want to head right. for? What we're asking for is the confirmation of the boarding vegetative wetland, the isolated uh, vegetative wetlands not jurisdictional, and, and it's uh, 
not subject to your regulations, and you're uncertain as to whether or not that's a coronal pulse, so you're not going to confirm it. Yeah. Right. So if I could and, and we're not going to confirm whether the stream is or isn't? That's correct. That was never something that was requested, and frankly, because of this military well commission, it's it's possible that that whole stream is out, and well, so it would be exempt, whether it's a we know, or not, doesn't matter. We know that the stream is not within the North River Corridor. Here's the North River Corridor map that we can present, make it even a little bit more confusing because it's not subject to your regulations. What we know is that it's a fresh water stream. It comes from that wetland system. It's been dry. I've given you more than the, the required data to, to prove it's dry. We've blocked in this in the field that it's dry. We're asking for the Conservation Commission to confirm that it's intermittent. Yes, sorry. Your name, I'm sorry, your I'm name and your... I'm Robert Schmitz, I live at 260 and Water Street. Okay. So, Murphy said the woman to buy a house under an assumed name, at the last minute of closing, pulled bait and switch. Right? Known, uh, some of the people know the woman's name. They right? like, known it. And yet, they're sitting here telling you what, what they are saying is true. Mm -hmm. And they're only proving that they don't have any integrity. Just that act of doing that in the, mid in the midnight, under the cloak of darkness, if I say, says, can you believe anything that people say? If somebody did that in your neighborhood, would you believe what they tell you when you talk to them? Well, I think that that's the reason why we have Lenore here. I mean, I can completely understand your frustration, and I am trying 100% to try to get up to speed as well and join the committee. That's one on on Friday, and now here we are. But I think with Lenore, um, that's why we have a specialist because we really want to make sure that the town is verifying everything that is being said. So I want those fears to be really taken care of. I'm not saying that whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, or we believe or we don't, but that's why I feel very comfortable having Lenore here who can educate all of us on what her findings are. Um, Thank you. So, and I appreciate that. I mean, especially day one here. So um, is, is there anybody else from the board that has anything else that they want to bring up a question I would think that's why we hired Lenore to be our yeah. expert for this so whatever she would recommend I would recommend I would think yeah and I feel that way as well what about, is there anybody else that wants to has a question or anything else hi hi I'm Dennis Murphy and I think most of these people are my clients uh, okay I'm with Hill Law in you sit here as a conservation commission trying to decide about lines on a plan. There will soon be another board sitting in this room or another room in town hall trying to grapple with a proposed development on this site. And they'll want to know where buildings can be built and uh, roads can be built and stormwater can be infiltrated and etc. Uh, and I want to read you, I, I have no business talking about wetlands, I'm a lawyer, not a wetland scientist, but I can tell you what the law is. And the law says very clearly, and this is right in the um, application uh, for a, a uh, ANRAD, it says that uh, confirmation of other resource areas may also be requested, provided the other resource area boundaries are identified on the plans which accompany the BVW boundary delimitation. So it is absolutely within your purview to require the applicant to delineate all resource areas that are actually in the field. And I think that's what Lenore recommended initially, actually in bold in her report, and that's what we ask because, uh, I'll tell a very quick anecdote, less than one minute. In another case in which both the Brads were involved, it's a very small uh, community out of Dighton, we had a 300 unit 40B. Uh, it was approved by the zoning board and the wetland permit ended up getting reversed in litigation 
because they argued that the ANRAD was all of the wetlands on the site. You know, once you sign off on this plan, it's good for three years. So imagine this plan goes in front of the zoning board and they want to put something right here that we've been talking about as a potential vernal pool. And they're going to say, well, it, it, look at the plan. This, we're relying on this plan. It's good for three years. And it doesn't say anything about the vernal pool or about a riverfront or setback or any of that thing. So uh, my recommendation to the commission would be to follow the advice of your own consultant and uh, require the submission of uh, information that would delineate all resource areas on the site. Uh, I think it saves time ultimately in the, in the long run so that we're not fighting about where buildings can go and, and, and wetland crossings are going to be for roads and so on. Because if you start with a plan, I mean, you could, I think you do have the power to endorse a BVW only plant. But that's useless because there's more out there in the field than just the BVW. And when we go in front of the zoning board and they're trying to engineer the layout and confirm that. Uh, things can be built, they're going to want to know where is that vernal pool? Where is that riverfront setback? Uh, and, and they are not as well schooled as you all are in making those determinations. Uh, one final thing, and then I'll let the uh, scientists get back to it. Uh, the folks who live on Water Street did uh, submit an application to uh, natural heritage. Uh, I sent it to you, uh, Rachel, but I'm not sure it went through because of the size. Yep. <laughs> uh, so I got an email later in the day. Here, here's a paper copy. Uh, that was submitted. Uh, you can see the types of information that data has been gathered by, uh, by the neighbors. And she's here uh, if you'd like to hear directly from her. It has not been decided what, one way or another whether, in fact, it is a vernal pool. But we'll see if there's the application. Thank you. I'll follow up very quickly. Uh, Mr. Murphy's correct. He, he took the words right out of my mouth. What we have done is we presented all the resource areas on this plan that's shown here tonight. Uh, watering vegetative wetlands, land subject to coastal storm flowage, and an intermittent stream. That's what we're asking for your confirmation through the NRAP process. We're not continuing, we're not, I, through the last couple months we've submitted three or four follow-up response emails back and forth, we've done all the studies, the boarding vegetative wetlands has been confirmed, we know that stream is an intermittent stream, go out any day this summer and you'll find it the same condition. Uh, so again, we ask for your confirmation for the wetland resource areas that have been shown, uh, we look for your support. We're not going to do any more additional studies and uh, spin the commission's wheels. I think this is the third, third or so hearing that you've had on this, and it seems to be getting more confusing and confusing, but it really isn't. I'm still confused about a ver possible vernal pool. If it isn't being shown, I would find it hard to say, yes, I'm going to accept the plan if it isn't even mentioned out there when it has been mentioned that it's possible here. Uh, I haven't been persuaded that it doesn't exist, though I'm not necessarily sure that it does. So I'm having to leave it up to you. To, but I, I would have to say, that unless you convince me it isn't there, then I want to see something saying that it might be there at least. This information was just handed. I have no idea where this is. I haven't been able to look at it. So. Uh, it's just handed to us tonight. Where those pictures were taken. As I said, we're not. <coughs> we're asking for your vote on the yeah. application as we And I would say the same thing. We, the information, you know, Brad tonight just showed me this map of the North River Commission. I don't know exactly where it would fall on there, so I can't advise the commission on how to make a determination relative to the stream. My, my reaction initially, which I would continue to hold, is that. Part of that site is within the North River Commission, and if it's in the North River Commission, it's exempt. So I don't think you have to make a determination on that stream. Because it very well may be within the North River Commission. I don't know where that is. I don't have enough information. <coughs> if 
Could you just could you just state your name because we're being recorded? Costello on Old Landing Road. Okay. Uh, regarding the North River Commission, the same you just met, uh, met just uh, uttered there that if it's in the North River Commission, it's exempt. Exempt from what? The Rivers Protection Act. Why would it be? Because when the legislation was drafted, first of all, it was right in there, and, and the reasoning is a riverfront has a 200-foot corridor of protection. The North River Commission offers 300 feet. So when the regulations then were codified, they said, look, we're not going to duplicate what the North River Commission is doing, number one. Number two, they have broader authority. So why would it matter? There's a 300-foot riverfront under the North River Commission. Why would we hold anyone to a 200-foot standard? So they said for these rivers that are in, everything's net from the rivers protection. Does that mean that the stream has 300 feet? Yes, if it's right. a natural bank. My name's Marty Crenan, I'm at 260 Water Street. And I'm just confused that at the beginning, Brad mentioned that the perennial stream was, was documented as a perennial stream somewhere. And now we're, but now we're being, so why does that not take precedent over him telling us that it's an intermittent stream in the middle of August? I guess I know is. Um, the regulations say that when it's shown as a perennial stream on the USGS map, it is presumed perennial. The only way to overcome that presumption is to have photographs, dated photographs, showing it dry for a period of four days. Not even consecutive days, four days. And Brad has submitted some evidence that shows there are dry areas of that stream. I submitted more than some. We submitted four days, plus we walked it in the field. Um, I put photographs of the entire stream bed is dry, all the way down to the marsh. We walked it on last Wednesday. Uh, it's fully dry. Was it four consecutive days, or was it four different days? It's four different days. It's been dry since the first day that I started observations. So it's been dry for at least a month or so. How, how do, I'm just curious, because I'm, I'm really am learning, so excuse my... Um, not being as intelligent as I wish I was right now. How do you decide what day you're going to go, you know, make a decision on? Whenever I'm available and in the area, I stop in and take a look, photograph the stream, and, and put a, a record together. Okay. So there's no specific and actually, way that... The, the way we set up the last inspection last week, which was more than the four days, is we timed it around a high tide because we... Lenora was um, questioning whether it was a tidal stream, right. if it had any tidal influence. Um, we went all the way down through the stream one hour after high tide, and it's clearly not a salt water stream. It's not tidally influenced. Um, so we observed it ourselves as being dry. You can laugh out loud at me at this one. I promise you it's going to be a good one. Um, what about moons and all that? Because I know like there's moon tides and all of that type of stuff. So does that sort of make things fluctuate? Not in this stream. Not in this stream? No. Lenore? That's, that's the type. So what you're looking at is you're talking about the North River. So what mm -hmm. I did in the, for the commission is that in our, in our site walk last week, I walked it before Lenore got there and GPS to some points. And I actually provided that to the commission. And if you look on this image that you all, you all received, here's the stream. Here's as you walk down the center line of the stream. Are these the ones that you gave us? Yep. So when you walk down the stream, I, I GPS the points to the marsh. See this marsh system? Mm -hmm. See this marsh system for the North River? This is, this is actually keeping this keep, Yes, this okay. is public record. See the marsh system? The marsh system is associated with the North River, mm -hmm. right? See my GPS points? See these points here at the marsh? Yeah. So that's where you would get that spring tide. Yeah. If, I, if, I, if I'll just let this finish, when you look at I just want her to just verify sure. what I'm looking together. at. Right. When you, when you look point. at a tidal system, like the North River. Do you guys want to see this? Yeah, yeah, it looks looks better in color. Yeah, Which I'll be quick color. because it's so far away, it's just going to get you a little bit more confused. The North River has uh, the normal mean high and mean low tide. Mm -hmm. The moon tide high tide line, which the Army Corps of Engineers would say is a higher tide, like your spring tide. And as you see, that, that moon tide will go over the North River and from Situate to Marshville, which you're looking at, oh, there's a moon tide and the, and the water's all the way at the edge of the salt marsh. Because typically, a normal tide 
the tide doesn't go over the salt marsh. It only goes over on a higher tide. Mm -hmm. The importance is the marsh. The marsh, as, I, as you can see on that GPS image, is very far away from the stream. So again, we're not, now we're, you know, mixing in tidal things and everything that gets the commission probably a little bit more confused because you might not be that, I, that's why I put that memo together so you could see that. Yeah. That and, 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 understand it and it isn't a matter of me being confused or not, it's just me really wanting to understand. Okay. I think um, everybody else does too, so I'm just trying to help everybody understand. Sure. So, Lenore. Just for a point of clarification, um, I had the same question and I've actually asked to get some guidance, unfortunately, yet to get any guidance, but because the North River is tidal, you may have this stream being tidally influenced, not subject to the tide. In other words, you're not going to get the tidal flow coming in on a diet, you know, twice a day. But what you may have is that when the tide sinks, the freshwater lens, which sits on top of the saltwater, also sinks. And when the tide comes in, it pushes that freshwater lens up. So it may be that there's some tidal influence. Now granted, when we were out there last Wednesday, it was an hour or so after high tide, and I didn't find any water up in this area. I did not walk down to the very edge of the marsh to see that. But I'm still looking for guidance from asking P to say, in, in these cases where you may have some tidal influence, number one, how do you make a determination? Number two, how does that affect how you determine whether it's dry, you know, intermittent or perennial? So that's another reason why I would, yeah. you know, not, or urge the commission not to make a determination on that. How is it determined originally? Because I agree with... It's perennial, as shown on USGS map. And, and somebody at some point had done some testing that proved that this was... USGS said, okay. you know what, this is a perennial stream. Now, I so said the same thing to Brad. I said, you know, I don't know where they came up with that. If it's, if it's this dry, where did they come up with that? I mean, I looked at the watershed. The watershed is a pretty small watershed. So it doesn't seem like it would support perennial flows. So why did USGS call it perennial? Was it because of some tidal influence? Was it because there was, you know, so it's questionable <coughs> in my mind. Like I said, I've asked DEP, can you give me some guidance here? And I haven't heard back from them yet. How long generally does that take for them to get in touch with you, just so I have Usually a couple of weeks. I mean, um, I know I went to Jim Mahal. Jim Mahal referred it to Dan Gilmore. I think Dan Gilmore was out for a week. It's been like a week and a half since I first requested. And I sent him another email today saying, I, I didn't get back before the end of the day. May I ask another question, too, because we're talking a little bit of fresh water, and I'm sorry if I'm asking too many no, questions no. here. Anyone can jump in. So I'm trying to understand, and that made sense to me when you're talking about the fresh water coming up and the salt water and tides and moons and all of that. So my other question is, is what is the effect of if we have, like, a 100-year storm? It seems like we've had quite a few in the last 10 years. Right. So does that affect also the flow of everything going Absolutely. on in there? Absolutely, it does. Yeah, because absolutely. It because you not only have water coming in from here, but you may also have, you know, something coming down from the, you know, freshwater end of things. Mm -hmm. Because this is a stream, and there is some upland, there is some wetlands up gradient. Well, so, the, that, the her question towards the hundred-year storm. That's a good question because that relates to the FEMA line. That so that's, to the that's, FEMA that's, line. that's designated okay. on the plan, and I. I don't believe you saw any, or I certainly didn't see any indicators of uh, tidal influence in this stream as we walked on the site. Did you see any? No, I didn't see any standing water, you know, but... Well, any, anything that you might see, like a rack line or... or, or, or well, there's a bank. There's a bank, so there is some flow. There's definitely... So a, there's, but, you know, but, something but that creates that Did you see any uh, indicators that you saw of, of a coastal community and there were any, any indicators that you would have seen of... of such as a brack, brackish no, but there are, or any, or any uh, rack line no, from a tidal No, anything. no, but there are such things as freshwater tidal streams. For instance, the Taunton River. Taunton River is totally fresh water up in Taunton and Dighton. There's not a speck of, you know, coastal vegetation. But it goes up and down because of the influence of the tide. And what about the Jones, Jones River as well in Kingston? Same thing. Okay. But as we timed it yes. so that we were out there, so there is there's absolutely no... Um, Uncertainty in my mind. This is not a tidal stream. It comes from that ponded area of the wetland. It's a freshwater stream. It breaks through the cart path. It's, if you walked it, you, you would observe that. Um, again, it seems to be kind of now getting a little bit off the track. 
I'm going to ask the commission to vote on the handwrite as we've submitted it to confirm the location of boring vegetative wetlands, to confirm that the isolated vegetative wetland is, is or you don't have to do anything because it's not on the plan, <coughs> and that the stream is intermittent and land subject to storm flowage is shown at the elevation depicted on the plan. So there's a you're, you want to leave the part of vernal pool completely off? That's up to the commission. It's well, my my experience that it's not a vernal pool, it doesn't hold water long enough, and it's, it would have to be in a wetland first to be a vernal pool. So that's up to the commission to make Some other questions, too, and I want to make sure yeah, we yeah, hear from everybody. Can you yeah, state your name again, please? Uh, Walter Costello. Mm -hmm. If the USGS is it, I try to remember. If, if the USGS has determined that it is a stream, then is it in his purview to declare it a intermittent stream? He's made the um, evidence. He's presented some evidence that it's intermittent. I know, but you, are you asking the commission to, to make the decision yes. on his opinion? He is, he is asking that, yes. So shouldn't the determinant of the status of that stream be the USGS? I, I can't answer that. The, wet, the USGS maps designate streams. The river's protection regulations Define whether a stream is perennial or intermittent based on the status of the USGS map. The riverfront regulations uh, has a determination on the classification of streams. And the, the classification of an intermittent versus perennial is in accordance with the regulations. I documented it in your, in your memo per the standard. I think Lenore would agree that I followed the standard in the wetlands protection regulations to document the stream as being intermittent. Do you agree, Lenore? Except for the fact that if it falls within the you know, third commission, then it would be well, exempt. Well, so let's not talk about exempt. Did well, I, did that's it, the riverfront regulations. <laughs> Is it? That's part does, of it. Does it follow the section of the riverfront regulations regarding intermittent and perennial per, per the, We can pull out the standard and read it. Yes, but, yes, it okay. does. Okay, thank you. May I ask one other question, too, and then we will get to you, too. So we were talking about FEMA maps at one point, so just catch me up to speed in regard to FEMA, because I know FEMA has been changing and recalculating all of their maps. So is the analysis that you're giving us based on what is current today, and are those ones going to be changing soon, as I know that FEMA has been doing some of that, right? FEMA updated their maps throughout the South Shore town mm -hmm. recently. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head when Pembroke was updated, but yes, the current FEMA um, map, the, the elevation of the lands of the coast on flowage is located on the plan. It the was updated, maps. excuse me, Brad, on 7, um, 7 2012. So that is the latest FEMA map. When, Lindell, can you just help me? When when have some of the other ones? I know like Marshfield CGA. Yeah, they're more recent. They're 15, yeah. 16. 15, I don't know 16. that Pembroke was updated. There's nothing on the FEMA <coughs> site. This is their most recent. I don't know if the you town has anything more recent that. that's draft. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it could be something that could be in their plans to change mm -hmm. or update? Unlikely, unless they that. have, unless it's the town has yeah, newer long information, long. but FEMA does not have any more information yeah, more recent than this so July they have 2012. No, yeah, so like they changed those other towns. They don't have any, they haven't indicated to Pembroke that we're, they're planning on changing ours. I don't know whether they have or they have not. What I, I can tell you is this Just is recently, is we had something come through with so FEMA. We don't have it. It's in the We haven't, but it, there was something in, in Plymouth meeting within the last month oh. with FEMA about the floodplain, but I don't okay. know. New, new information. Well, if the FEMA line changes, the, the elevation will have to be corrected, and any plans that would come forward to the commission would have to have the correct elevation. But as we sit today, the correct and accurate FEMA location is shown on the plan. <coughs> yes, your name, please. Scott Jett, 246 Water Street. One of the benefits that I can offer the board is that I'm a 15 year resident of this property. And I've been able to observe this area in question year after year. Um, I do not have or possess the degrees that the experts in this case do, but I can tell you that observation tells me that this is a very dynamic and a very special area. Um, there's terminology that's flowing throughout, uh, flowing. 
<laughs> there's this idea of a perennial stream, there's this idea of a pool. I would respectfully ask the Commission to consider that, that these areas have not been fully delineated. I would also tell you that the application that you have just received, and I know, sir, Mr. McKenzie, that, that this has just uh, been given to you, but there is evidence that there are species that would require a vernal pool in order to breed. There are salamander egg sacs that have been identified on this property. Uh, there are also uh, other species, wood frogs and other types of frogs, choruses. Depending upon when you go into this property, it's really going to depend on what you find. So you can walk there now and it can look pretty darn dry and it can be very uncompelling. But I would ask the Commission to consider that we should potentially look at looking at this property in the spring when the vital period is at its highest peak, when the frog choruses are deafening, when the water is not this deep, but my waders tell me that it's over my waders and into my boots because hip, it's this deep. Hip boots or waders? Boots, thank you. Boots, thank you. My point is simply this. There's a lot of questions yet to be answered. I think this is a dynamic and a very uh, fragile biological area within this town and I think that it requires uh, some additional study and careful decision making as to what we pronounce as being this or that at this period. What I'm hearing right now is that there's still questions and I would respectfully ask that the board uh, take that into serious consideration before rendering any sort of decision tonight. Thank you. Greg, I'm, I'm hearing that you are not going to allow a continuation. Is that is that what we're going on? In our indefinite? That's correct. There isn't any new information here um, that hasn't been answered by the commission and shown on this point. Well, no, I'd have to take exception with with that. And if that's the case, then you can be sure that I will not be voting to accept it as it is because I am not satisfied that everything is on that plan that needs to be on that plan so that it can go to the next stage of development of this project. And that's only my personal opinion, but that's, it being, if you're saying you're doing then that's so I'm gonna let you know where I stand right up front. And for me, um, I, I cannot make a decision right now. I mean, I just fell into this. Um, so for me, I don't feel comfortable making any type of a decision, so my vote would have to, you know. We have 21 days to make a decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so I just, I just really, I don't feel comfortable enough. I really want to get up to speed with everything, but let, no, my question would be is, if it is denied tonight by the board, what are the options of the applicant? Because I want to make sure that we're fair to the applicant, sure. but I also want to make sure that we're not doing something where we have to be within so many days and we miss right. a date. The, um, there is an appeal period for the applicant or 10 citizens or for the commission um, to undertake. The, well, the commission will vote tonight, and based on their decision, the applicant or 10 citizens or an abutter have the ability to appeal that decision to MassDEP. MassDEP will then issue a superseding order of resource hearing determination and they'll make their own decision. Um, there's an appeal period that follows that as well. So, so if the DEP decides, if, if we um, we vote no tonight, then it is brought to appeals to DEP and DEP gives a decision that we're not in conjunction with. Do we get the opportunity as a board to appeal that decision to the DEP? Yes, you do. What is the time period for that? Um, you have 10 business days to appeal it, and then it goes to an adjudicatory hearing, and that, that moves pretty quickly now. They have a 180-day time frame to get things rolling, so that All right. And I know you did have a question that you were... Yeah. Um, <coughs> just, you were saying a cart, an old cart path is there. Um, so I'm just curious about that. The um, other thing is, again, the pictures with the eggs and stuff, I mean, no offense to anybody, but I don't see GPS timestamps and such. So um, I can't really look at those as valid until such time. Um, they're interesting, but to me, they're, you know, they're just not validated enough to be looked at as evidence. So that's my take on that. But um, 
Curious too. Um, Great Blizzard of '78. Anybody down there to look at where the water came up? I lived there my whole life. Yeah. Well, Steve what you see that day? Steve, Steve. 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 What okay. is that? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. And your address, please. Two eight six water. Thank you. Do you yeah, want to give some insight? Um, on one piece on my property, out beyond where they are, um, we have a place we can't. And on a yep. tree, we have marked, probably five years ago, we had one of those four or five rain days, a couple of northeast storms. And on a tree, there's a nail where the water line came up two foot from around on the level of the ground. The nail's still in the tree, and I can show you that. So that area will, at times, water will back up the North River. High tide, full moon tide, two or three coastal storms come in. There's only so much water that can go out the North River. And when you get all the water from Rockland, Abington, but it's, they're going to keep me So you're saying that the water a few times every, who knows, many years comes in? Every 10 years, every 5 years, it depends on the weather. Right now, as you know, the last 5 years, we've been in a rain deficit. Yeah. Rick and I can further that um, in the sense that what he's telling you is that that area is land subject to coastal storm flow or some right. of that. And that's what the 100 year FEMA flood zone says. So they estimate at least once in 100 years, the flood is going to get up to a certain point, which is what FEMA says is elevation eight. So um, yeah, that's, I would expect yeah. storm events that that would, would portions of that site would experience that coastal storm flow as verified by FEMA. I know when we walked at this, myself and Bobby and a few other people walked in the spring, it was a lot of areas you couldn't walk. It was the water was that high. Where where it is conjunction with this, right, that's we walked down Chucky's property, yeah. and that's where we were. I would have to recommend that we go with Lenora's findings, and vote on Lenora's findings, and leave it at that. And if it's to the point it needs to go to DEP after that, let them make the decision on it. But uh, we we asked our expert to give her give us her opinion she's given it to it I think it, it's wrong on our part not to go with her opinion I have to feel that by leaving anything off of the plan whether it's positive or negative for the project all it can do is confuse the project farther on down the road and that a plan like this needs as much information whether it be good or bad for the project on it, and I think we're we're skirting around some of the things that might be detrimental to the plan, though they may not be right at this moment. But they may be done. I just uh, like to see a more comprehensive plan showing what really is there, what could be there, what you're going to have to deal with, so that when we sit in this room six, eight, or ten months from now, looking at property lines or roadways, we aren't deciding well is that where the Vernal pool was, is that going over the stream? So I just can't move the plan the way it is. And I also want to state that um, I am a previous zoning board member as well. So I just recently um, came off of that board, maybe six months ago or, or a little bit more than that. I have to agree that it would make a lot more sense for us if we, if this was 100% getting to zoning, getting to planning for site board, uh, you know, site plan approval and all that. It may be more beneficial for you as well too. It's to me. I feel like we need to see everything clearly delineated on here, so the next people can make decisions. Right? Is that how the process will go? They'll go to yeah. ZBA yeah. from here, because um, then if it comes back to us, I think that there's going to be a lot of back and forth. I don't know how the rest of the board members feel. I think more information is always good. I think failing to plan is planning to fail in a big project, and mm -hmm. I think that you just have to recognize that. And um, I think there's always two sides to every coin. And I, I think, like I said, the pictures are interesting, but I maybe a timely, you know, study um, <coughs> at the right time would verify or not. And so I don't feel we have enough information to really. You have 
couple of options you could approve okay. portions that you feel are accurate. You can deny portions that you don't feel are accurate. Um, so, or you can deny it, deny it all. It's a, that's your choice. But what I'm hearing from the commission, and I think that Lenore will, would agree, is that the boring vegetated wetland line is accurate. Land subject to post storm flowage is accurate because that's an elevation set by FEMA. That's not a delineation event. And the question is of these unknown vernal pools and the question on the status of the intermittent stream that comes from the wetland. Those are the two items I think that you guys are wrestling with. The other, the other two I think are nailed down, but maybe you're in question of those as well. All right. I, I also like to see this superimposed on there. I like to know where the North River loses its jurisdiction. Exactly. 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 Even though it may have nothing to do with it, in my mind, it makes me feel more comfortable when I know there's a, here's the line, yeah. this is theirs, this is ours. I mean, otherwise, it's in your mind. Where Where is it? And, it? and this is going to be going down. These are the things I think we, if we do now, we can save ourselves hours of discussion in meetings down the, down the road because somebody else is going to ask the same question every every time you mm -hmm. people come before a board they're going to say where is the line for the north river well it's here but this isn't there well this is our third meeting maybe fourth meeting of the commission um there were a couple council ones yeah. one of them you didn't suggest and that is that you can deny the application for lack of information right that's exactly what happened in the Dighton case and was affirmed. The commission denied it for lack of information. It went up on appeal, and the commission's position was upheld by the uh, DEP after a full trial on that issue. And uh, and so I, I just wanted you to know thank that's you. also yeah, Thank you, yes. Yeah. And the reason for no continuation would be because you've been here a couple times. Is that why I'm just trying to get caught up? This board yes, has gone you know through. Why? This because board has gone through a transition where we have and more things that are going to twist the commission outside of the realm of what we're here for tonight. It's going down the wrong path of, of uncertainty. There is no uncertainty, folks. There's a bordering vegetated wetland accurately delineated, land surface coast storm flowage, intermittent stream. Well, here's so the good news: yeah. and, and you, you know those things, then you can go positively forward with those things that he's sure of, right? right? But you are saying it's that, that and that is all. Everything else is on that plan that exists there. That we should have jurisdiction over. That's correct. No. no. I don't feel like I have. I don't feel that way either. I'd like to have the overlay like you suggested of the North River. Uh, so I'm, I'm just. <coughs> if we had a continuation, the items that you're bringing up would not change, correct? Nothing is going to change from the work that we've done. We've documented the intermittent stream status. Um, we showed that the isolated vegetated wetland is not jurisdictional. We can't, that horse has been beaten. Um, you know what, um, Lenora seems like done. it's different, and she seems, she's the town expert. She's the one we hired. Yeah, right. the issue is with the vernal pool. It's <coughs> right here where the vernal pool is. It's an intermittent stream. Like, I know, it's an intermittent pond. That's the definition of it. So it does dry up. So in the springtime, I'm sure there'd be water there. Yeah. 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 I, I, I have a problem with the vernal pool more than the yeah. stream base. I, I again have to, Why isn't the pool and maybe I'll make it a motion Why? Why, Brad? that we accept Lenore's recommendations and vote on that. Yeah, we don't have to vote on that. We'll okay. Close. Then we'll then, then vote to close. Paul Peter. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to make a motion that we vote on this tonight. Can we vote on it tonight? Vote on this? Vote on this, I think in all fairness, we need to give Sharon, Sharon a little time to get up to speed on the, the whole thing. It's a, it's a, it's a big project. Oh, and Walter. You want to make a motion right now? Yeah. We just did not. We just closed? We closed it. No, that's fine, but I think we should vote on it right now. All right. Is there a what, second? What do, you, what do we vote on? Yeah. What's the language? On the delineation of the red and red line. Yeah, the, the wetlands. Port, the there's not enough information in the MRA. Oh, no, go ahead. 
Probably want to Denied for lack of information. Great. Yeah, okay. I would okay, yeah, second I'd, I'd that, that we close yeah, for the lack of information. Yeah. That's can what you I make your felt. motion a little clearer so Rachel can get that down? Okay. Um, a motion to deny the request for NRED um, because um, of lack of information? I would second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Well, there we go. Good night. You just can't tell when the pictures are taken. Or anything. Nah. Just, uh, hey, it looks great. But it does. No it's a nice color photo. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about like me asking questions about the full moon. Uh, it's actually proper. <laughs> it's a proper question. Yeah, I was just like, I don't you're know. Gonna, you're you're gonna, 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 I'm gonna work with Rachel on answering that. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Perfect. good. Yeah, it's yeah. very good when you brought be positive. Mm -hmm. Don't we? We don't like what you're doing. Does Rachel put together? Uh, do you hold Rachel put together a decision? Drafted decision? Yeah. Yeah. We want you to keep up. Because make it watertight. It's the only piece in there that doesn't have AC. Is this off? Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's the war room for a reason. Yeah. I think they're hoping to go there at this point. They're, they're hoping to go to DEP. Yeah. Go above us. That's right. what they're trying to do. That's what they're doing. Yeah. 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 What I was saying, I wish there were documents. I wish, pictures. I wish there were documentation of the eggs and when they were taken and where. They weren't GPS. Well, we, they like I say, we walked in. You can't look at them. We walked in the spring. You just couldn't walk out. So it just doesn't work. Yeah. Thank you very much. I, I didn't mean to be up the dates on the fishes or anything. I just tried to be, I'd like to see it more solid. The fish and Bill? Oh, yes. I was looking at you, Bill. funny. I know Bill very well. No, Bill Madden was my father. So. I do look like I'm a little, I'm told. So, yeah. Um, I think a different Thank Matt. Thank you. I thought I was going to kill oh. Oh. Worst part, you get to hear the AC, but it's not it's happening okay. here. It's okay. No, but it's still, it's air. Nice to meet you, folks. Nice to meet you. Thanks for coming in. I got the right place for the door here. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. No, we've got a few things to take. Chairman wanted to apologize. Yeah. Said so we got any. Oh, no apology necessary. Yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah. Keep rolling over the clock there. Well, anyway. I think he kind of, I think he kind of backed everybody into a corner when he said, that "There's no way I'm going to continue." It's like, I think well, he knows you know, what's going on. He needs to go to the state. No, but it's it's not that. I don't think you you hand out an ultimatum. No, not to when. to somebody that's asking questions. I mean, it'd be one thing if we were all sitting around here, we all had 20 years experience, we were all engineers or wetland scientists and everything, but when you're trying to listen to the expert you recommended and somebody basically tells you, I don't care what you guys do, I'm not continuing. That's when yeah. Bobby did the right thing. No, I agree. No, yeah. done. No. That's why Bobby's here. He yeah. has that experience. We're not going to go we're not going to accomplish anything. No. We could, we could beat the vernal pool to death. Exactly. You know, I mean... But I don't like to be hand ultimatums. I think if I think if they're by the right authorities, they're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think it depends on the authority they're being handed by. That's how I look at it. There's I I no don't I there. don't handle ultimatums no matter who the authority is. I, I you know you want to talk to me that's great, but don't hand me an ultimatum. Everyone ready to approve, approve the minutes of uh, July 10th? Okay. I can't approve the minutes because okay. I was in here, but did we have a second? He said yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Perfect. Approve the minutes of July 17th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Yeah, so nope. I just um, wanted cool. to bring up, and I know this is like my first day here too, so um, in regard, um, Rachel, nice. maybe you can just get me kind of hard to say, but like, itemizing every single piece of mail that the conservation gets, I, I'm not sure that that's 100% necessary, so okay. I'd like to make a motion to just say mail, and when we get here, we can verify it. I didn't notice a sign in sheet in here, so I don't know if there is a sign in sheet. We used to sign the front have, of it. Um, yeah. We used to have a sheet in okay. there, okay. and it just had um, every week we just would put it in there, just stating that everybody did read the mail. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if we could, is, that's what that. I'd like to make my emotion to do that. I'll second How that. How do you guys feel about that? Is that good? Yep. And yep. that's the other thing too. Maybe perhaps as a uh, committee we could decide to come together, maybe like a couple different ways. Um, I know I used to get my package from GBA mailed to me on Fridays, but perhaps we could, um, anything of importance, not that anything in here isn't important, but anything town related, perhaps we could have email to us. If some of us don't email, I'm not sure, does everyone email? I know I email. Mm -hmm. like, correct you don't email. Oh. Would you well, be I opposed could. to coming in, like maybe on a Friday to pick up? Anything um, that might be pertinent, just so we can have a chance I, to review it? Yeah, that would be okay, too. I also, um, went around where it says several places. I couldn't find postings, actual billboard postings with a tack on a real billboard physical uh, posting anywhere but at the town hall. I think it says several, which means three or more. And I looked around uh, just because I was in the center and I wanted to get, you know, the today what was going on. And it wasn't available today at 5 o'clock at the library. Um, I think the only post place the agenda has to be posted is here. When those, when those other postings go I believe that's for like town meeting mm -hmm. because the constables go post those yeah. okay that's what I was asked so, yeah. so only I, the secretary then the only responsibility I had unless anything has changed Rachel said that it had to be posted here so we had one posted in front of our office and we had one posted up in front of the selectmen we also have to post it on the town website in town website right. well that's, that's true yeah. because that's how long ago okay. it was okay. 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 Rachel okay. I'm sorry I'm rubbing it in how old okay. Okay. Oh, <laughs> time out um Posting, there are computer postings, which is, if you ask 100 people, everything's computer, but a billboard, a tack board, um, a hard copy, is what a person like myself needs. So I would have to come here um, Thursday at the end of the day or Friday, whichever was, was, whichever was okay. good. Just have a folder for me. That's all I require. Mm -hmm. I need time to go over things and, and settle it in my head. Yeah, so, and that's, and that's what I'm, that's actually why my suggestion is being made, because I think if we come in here, Agree. you know, at our meeting, it's on the agenda that we're looking at the mail at 7.30 p.m. I don't think it's given us enough time to I thoroughly review. I've been saying that forever. Okay, perfect. Well, that's one of the reasons why <laughs> I'm not your here fault. tonight You're to new. try to figure out how you guys flow. We're sharpening um, our knives now. Yeah, so, um, I'd like to make a motion that if we have any town-related mail, yeah. You have, have to, to tell someone else to make your motion. Oh, yeah, and somebody else make a motion. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I need my little book for dummies. Any and, all <laughs> yeah. any and all pertinent information concerning the next forward meeting that is um, advertised as a meeting with, with an agenda, I would say the more it, advance notice people have, the better, because everybody's busy, and I just need a few hours before, but Friday would be great. Right. Just a little folder with my name on it, and I'll collect them. So everyone wants a folder on Friday with no. the information for the next. It program. sounds like just Rick, because yeah, you just, you I, may email us. Right, stuff. This oh, is, all right. This is my email. This is my airmail. Okay. <laughs> uh, 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 I might want to put an R in there. If there's something that's going to be lengthy that we need to look at, yeah. Then right, in the yeah. email say pick up. Okay. Yeah. Correspondence yeah. at yeah. office. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll those are email on 14 share pages. Okay. Don't just only read the first one. Yeah, and I think it's. Um, for me, it's more like time related stuff, paper. anything yeah. that's like a notice of intent, you know, I mean, things like that that we have to sort of prepare for. Yep. But like these little memos of like um, different, you know, what are some of these things? These little walks and listening sessions and stuff like that. I think that we can sort of thumb through that when we get here. Okay. Um, and it should just say mail. Yep. A couple of things I was thinking the mail though is, so this is the office regarding maps. In other words, they want us to buy, it's time to buy two maps again. Yeah. And I might suggest that if anyone is interested in any of the older maps, after two years we recycle. I would like to buy the recycled. Well, <laughs> we, we will. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, but I mean, they're, they're available because we get 
we usually buy two every new ones every yep. year and keep it for you know one year afterwards to repair but after, after a while you get a pile of them and it's mm -hmm. basically the same and it's good to have those yeah, on hand so when we're at home we yeah, well it's nice to have you know, yeah, you can, no, yeah we'll look all over yeah, yeah. yeah. um Take okay, so was that mail thing? I, I don't know if anyone seconded it. It's not all yet. No one has seconded. Second. second. Oh. <laughs> we'll fight over. You made the motion. No, no fight. All right, we made the motion. I, sorry, right. my bad. All right, so good. So the mail is all set. So we're all on track with that. Good. And then also to uh, Rick, 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 sorry. Yes. Um, I know since you don't email, one of I did get an email uh, today. I think it came from Sabrina. Uh, from the selectman's office that did mention about what our responsibilities are for postings and things like that so that did come through i did get an email on that i don't know if everybody else had a chance i am mm -hmm. in my email all day long so um i didn't forward that to to everybody that because it's really just for me for posting the minutes okay i actually got mine from like sabrina so it's just about posting yeah okay perfect so we have a <coughs> period of how long you have to take to post the minutes on the and on the website yeah Okay, perfect. Um, what else do we have on here? Get me up to speak to you guys. Anything else in the mail that anybody wants to discuss? Yeah. Um, yes, obviously the um, issues that were brought up and we had no meeting, they're still on the agenda. <clears throat> I'd like to discuss the uh, revisit the keys, discuss that, figure that out. Uh, the road base that uh, used as landscaping. Okay, so that's nothing to do with the mail, though, right? So we're closing out mail. We're done. Closing out. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep oh, us on no, track. No, no, right? So we're I all agree. done with mail. A little confused yep. tonight. Yep. Bobby, we're all done with mail. So okay, so we'll just move on to the next item, which is um, the minutes you already, you guys already approved. Yep. And then yep. this other revisit. So. Catch me up to speed. So these little um, things down here, um, items requested by the Vice Chairman, Richard Madden, these are just items of general conversation? Is this how we would put things right here? Uh, yeah, I, I, would, <coughs> I would say revisit. That's what okay. I think it was. Okay. Um, okay. So we've already discussed them, so it's just revisiting them. I wanted to uh, thank. I think the key thing it was, a, is, it was information in one of the folders within the last two or three weeks from the town administrator sitting a town key policy right goes to now that's um goes to ed thorne all key distribution is that correct that's what it says yeah no i've been seeing that so we should have kind of been given that right away not a year later after a runaround that's my right. opinion so on that I one ask a question on that just to, yeah. um so you had originally asked for keys for what um, i was here at that one meeting yeah but I was um basically um, I kind of overlap, and as other commissioners have in the past, uh, many of them on both boards being a fisheries commissioner and a conservation commissioner, they really are interwoven spaces of both authorities. So, you know, I go in, I clean up trash right now. There's a horrendous pile I'd like to go in and get, but there's no way to get it. So um, there's, there there's 45 tires off Indian Trail. People have said we want to get these things and we need keys to go through gates to clean up. We also, um, I go down and literally do fish counts. I, I walk all different properties. I'm probably one of the guys that outside of Bobby has walked every, every foot around here. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it was access. You would ask me what I want them for. Um, I have keys to buildings. I have keys to the gates that drain Furnace Pond, okay, mm -hmm. on the dam. So those are the type of keys I have and accesses I already have. So as Bob said, he doesn't give them to just anybody I don't think I'm just an anybody, and if that's the case, then you know that's kind of no, ridiculous. So uh, my point is that having the keys makes it easier. And there are private citizens that hold the keys. There's beach keys that um, Mr. Boyle's son, uh, when I asked him about who controls the gates at Windswept Bogs, and I said, well, you're the beach guys, you control. He says, never in our life. We have nothing to do with that, never heard of it. So there's a lot of back and forth stuff over the keys. Um, been asking for three years. I've been on Conservation Commission. I do, um, you know, fisheries, I'm reforestation. I get right in the dirt and the mud. And at times I want to take a swim and I want to walk a half a mile, tell you the truth, to get to one of these lakes. And I always pick up trash when I'm there. 
and I'm handicapped and uh, I think it's realistic the conservation commissioners that are trusted uh, to have keys as fishery commissioners could drain the pond yeah. I think I think the relevance is that they deserve them uh, and I'm not um, here to decide really and none of us really are who yeah. deserves any of that so so, so much for the keys they all go up to Ed Thorne. But, but I, 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 that's I, the thing too, though. I think that here's the thing: the opportunity. You don't. I don't want everybody getting upset with each other on this board. Whatever the different indifferences have been, it's just for the position that we're in right now is that the policy is is that the selectmen are the ones who adopted this plan for the keys. Unfortunately, none of us can make that decision. So uh, I think uh, you may be making some very valid points. I think the valid point is why was I not given that information three years ago? I have no idea. Okay, that's nobody my knew, point. Nobody knew for sure where, where that was. It was dug out of the file in the selectman's office it when, it, when it became a, a bigger issue, Rick. And someone says, I know there's a policy. and I don't know why it became a bigger issue. Well, I've got keys all over this town. There must have been at some point a problem with the keys. That's the mm -hmm. only reason why I can think that the selectman would want such a thing. I, I don't know. Absolutely so they agree. will have to decide on that. The good thing, though, and the convenience that we have as a board of you know conservation here is that we have two town employees here that have keys. You know, so I'm sure that if you needed to get into some place that arrangements could be made easy enough for somebody to meet you. I, mean, I, I think that that's a, a positive. I think a better thing would be just not kicking it back down the ladder again to have the same faulty stuff between people happen. I think Ed Thorne's fine. I think they could have a couple of keys right here if we need to get them. We go to somebody, a secretary, I think a I think or, or Ed a Thorne or something, and <coughs> it, it takes it out of this commission's hands fully because it didn't well, work anyway. Not, not just us, every commission. I, I said this. That's what I'm saying. So. There's another solution that involves a little, I guess. You can have more than one lock uh, on We do it all over the place. And I think this is part of, of yep. some of the problem is the town has a series of locks and they get used for everything. So they may be only guarding the gate to a trail that goes into the, to the woods. Uh, they may be a lock in the shed that keeps all of the lawnmowers. Yep. You know, and it's the same. Yeah, I, it's I, the same lock, and maybe we need to look into well, I think second a, a second series of of locks yeah. for for gates and all. But I'm not saying that's no. I, I think that's a that good a good way to move to forward do. on it because we do that in a lot of places. Brockton has but again, a key. If we I do that again, we still need to go upstairs yeah. because right. no, no, I agree. The key policy now. Yeah, well, yeah. and I think that we, that that's we know a about. very good argument to maybe bring to the selectmen, and maybe it's a really good compromise. You know, so I don't think it's a compromise. I think it's just due process and should have been done long ago that way. Well, that's all. I'm just saying that maybe it's a compromise because no. you would be able to get what you needed. That's all I'm saying. So um, I think that that would be a great I think way. the town gets what it needs. I'm a volunteer, so they get Me what too. they need, you know? I know. That's the point here, not us individually. I know. I so the other thing about that. also, just right on the record, uh, I walk in that door. I've known everybody for years. I haven't known everybody for years. I may like you, your business. I leave it at the door outside. When I walk out the door, I leave it inside. And that's across the board, mm -hmm. the whole thing. So um, I would well, say I we move on to the next. And again, the just close because that you one. brought that up is that, I don't know, as a board, we're here to support each other in a way, you know what I mean, like to respect each other. And most importantly, we're here for the town in our community. So I think that that's what we're all trying to do. We're all trying to get down to that same path. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I, I agree that it's Bob's. Um, job and he does a great job at threading the legal needle on the eye of the job you know he threads yeah. that legal eye yeah. on the job and he does a good it job at it forever and I, I think he has volumes of knowledge I think that um, the time spent on boards <coughs> and then new people come on and things have changed over time and like you know just to not to move on but when I said you can't use road base you know as landscaping material yeah you can use it for a road a parking lot you know, under a road, but you can't use it for landscaping. Right, we were so like, well, hold on. Track for one time. So we it it is on track. I want, I, okay. I'm just, I want to get to the next one. I'm not arguing your point. I'm really just trying to run the meeting just the way, right. okay, just one step at a time, just so we can make sure that. I thought we're, we're done with the keys. Gonna, so let's, with the keys, we know that we're going to be, you know, they'll be administrated by Ed Thorne. We should go to the selectmen and to Ed Thorne. Um, so they can decide on how they want to handle that process because it has nothing to do with us. 
So the next one was to revisit the road base and mm -hmm. um, use this landscaping. I don't know anything about that. So okay, well, just real simple again. Fisheries Commission. Um, I hate not versus, but adopts to and intercedes and works with conservation. And we brought up that, you know, <clears throat> it was inappropriate to use. And I, I even said it may have been, there was a storm coming, they could have just stabilized the bank with it. It wasn't even permanent, nobody knew. I, I don't but, know where you are. Uh, it's simple. At the rotary, they used road base to grade a hill that was right over a brook. Now, uh, I'm I, sorry, can you just slow down just one second? Because I'm just reading the sentence, and this is what it says Revised road base used as landscaping. You have to pretend go. I know zero. Okay. I don't. I don't okay, even know I'll what I'm talking about. Okay, I'll start real simple. Okay, roads, a road. You pick I, up, I know what a road is. Where are you talking about? At the rotary. The new rotary that There's was only just one built in Pembroke. Yes, one okay. rotary in town. There's a brook that goes up into a wet bog, and that bog attaches to Indian Head. The herring come up in it and spawn. Um, whether they should be there or not, tell the herring, because they're there. I don't want to talk to a herring and say, don't go there. So when you landscape, a grade, it's riprap fabric, you know, to stop the water from ripping it down. Um, they used what's called road base. That's road that's been pulled up, ground up, and then you put it under the new road or under a sidewalk, but not for landscaping down, you know, grades. And we brought it up and it was like we were the bad guys. We just trying to facilitate a nice fix and get everybody happy on all sides. You know, we get beat up pretty bad for it on, on camera, and, you know, and arguing it's not going to fix it. The state came in and said, yeah, well, you know, fishery says, well, you're right, you can't whack them in the head, and it's, and they fixed it, and I wanted to say thank you. <clears throat> we worked together with hopefully next time, if there is a next time, less friction. When a person is correct, or a group of people are correct, let's just go forward with it. Let's not beat each other up. Let's do our job without you know, any in, any negative stuff, if possible. You know, that's what I'm asking. So that one's already been resolved? Yes. They, they pulled it all out, and they put rock in landscape fabric. So there isn't anything so further to discuss on that one? Other than thank you for um, the bad publicity that it puts out there for other members on the, the sites that we're wrong. We have, like, you know, Nazis dealing with, like, you know, certain people, and... That's not how we are. It just well, had to be fixed. And I'm not trying to stir the pot, but two things. One, sometimes things get fixed not because they were wrong, because it's easier to fix them the way somebody wants it than it is to listen to it. And the second is that until the road is done, it's really, and until something goes wrong, I we don't that. have the authority to something engineer. Well, it was going wrong, in my opinion, and we have well, your you have your opinion. I respect it, but the the officials, the, cost the officials that actually it? came in and dealt with the problem that said it can't be there. Um, I said, look at the plan. Is what I said. I didn't say tell somebody what to do. I said, look at the plan, Bob. When it, when well, it what did the plan say? I, we never got to look at it. All the meetings have been canceled. It's all been denied, and this is the first time we've talked about it since it happened. So, where's the plan? I was glad to look a whole set of plans in the office. I know that somewhere. I don't think it was that big a deal. I think it just was made into a big deal. When the order of conditions was put together, did it specify what type of materials was to be used? This is a this is state. Plan. Yeah, this is the yeah. state. So, so it's it's yeah, state. It's so state it's it's another one of those who has the the jurisdiction to exactly over, over that. I mean, there's a state engineer on the job. You know, and that's re really his job until something can go wrong or until you can prove that it, it, it's going to go wrong. Yeah, in, in and basic plans, if, it, it, if and you can hire all the people you want to draw it up. You know, they give you a disclaimer that says if you incorporate a mistake, you own it. So it's right. that type of ruling that things happen. And I wasn't even sure that it was that not just to stabilize it temporarily, but it did go wrong, and we fixed it, and that's good. That's what the process is supposed to do. Who um, paid for the repair? Um, probably that 10% that they're well over of the project, um, you know, fund so that they... the state is taking care of that to remove and replace it? I, I don't believe we would pay for that. That's part of their job, and... Uh, we pay for it. You pay for it. Town Anything over? It? It was, it's no over cost to the town. Paid. Everything right there. All, all of that was a Un Unfortunately, was, Rick, and this was no as my understanding on this whole project is we have an engineering firm that designed the project. 
and from one end to the other and drew all the plans. Yep. And the day that they presented the plans and the state said, oh, isn't this good? They said, thank you, turn their back and walk away. Yep. They have no responsibility at all. Yep. Now the town of Pembroke bought the plans yep. through the state. They have a state engineer that's there to make sure the plans work. But anything that goes over and above yep. How is much of it had to be, um, just probably like 25 feet by 15 this is, feet this is by a very small item yeah, very small it adds it, it adds it, to all of the small items and many of the bigger items that are that are in on the plan and, so. and i think again different people have different opinions about what's important and um if there were no breeding herring in that pool below it and in the bog it would have probably not been as great a threat so but, did you yeah, come out but the other side of that oh, I'm sorry. is that the herring shouldn't have been there in the first place. Well, they you know, in that if, I, if I want to look at yeah. the other, well, they shouldn't be up there. So, you know, well, maybe, well, no, I don't they, they should be, that. well, there's different sides. I, I, we're questioning whether they should go into the bog, but they're going to come up to that. They they're going to come up to the culvert. Yeah, and that's right. because there's no more dam at the old pump house. So um, th that is an area that now has become a great little spawning spot. And I, the question is to the state, and we've asked them, you know, is the bog a smart idea or not? And that's not up to us. It's up to the herring and the guys above us. The Where did they flood those bugs from? from? They can't flood them at all anymore. No, anymore they can't, but is yeah. that how they ended up there in the beginning? No, it's, it's just no, it's a a backup. That's the outlet inside. It's actually an, it's a wet bog. It, it keeps the same height as the pond. Yeah. Okay. So there's boards in a flume. You can regulate mm -hmm. the water, but you can't flood it. So at what point, what do you net them? I mean, there's different things. We're learning. It's a new yeah. experience for everybody. Right. So is that, again, I feel like it's I mean, you got the answer. I mean, it looks like it's already taken care of. So yeah, no, and I just again wanted but to is thank that everybody a for. Thing or is that a conservation it's thing? It's both. It, that when it happens like that, it's kind of both. It's double jurisdiction. Both people, if we're in the water at the edge of the bank, I'm there. So it kind of, I'm like both, both. Okay. And right. people of the boards before us did the same thing. Perfect. Well, you know? I guess that's but again, I just done. hope that if there's another thing in the future, we can work it out equitably and easily. I think and that that maybe cheaper. Great idea. <laughs> you know? If all of us can come together, I think that that's what's going to be best for the town. So uh, that's all I'm here for. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so all right, so that's all done. What's the next one here? Revisit Mr. Jurgen Kelleher's application. Jurgen, what is his name? Jurgen, his application. Is it still yeah, um, on the table? Well, he had three different applications. One in, uh, I think it says here, let's see, Jurgen. So for February, he had one that didn't uh, process. It yeah. was uh, handed in. And then in June, he had another one that was uh, not processed and mm -hmm. got lost. And then he put one in in July. And uh, I just think that due process, um, whether he's wanted, not, or voted in or out, I think due process in a timely fashion is something like you had yourself, like I've had. Yeah. I think that's something that um, you need to bring to the point that um, it, it's a hard thing because, like you said, getting people to volunteer. If you go online, just recently, there's only things, you know, advertises how many spaces are open. You get an application, it doesn't even say conservation on it, or anything by design. It says other. And that just makes it a second class citizen to begin with. That's not you know? out of our office. Yeah. I'm not saying it's out of your so, office, I'm just saying it's, it's what it is. Of, it's out of the, the select board office, is mm -hmm. where okay. all that comes from. And that's and when it comes time, they're the ones that accept the application. Oh, I know that. And then they kick it to us for approval. Well, and if it doesn't come for us for approval, we don't. We don't. I thought we did a. I thought we did a recommend. Yeah, you can recommend. I thought we did a recommend, and then the then the selectmen voted it, and then it was just them that voted it. it. Had nothing to do with us voting somebody in. I don't know that the. Um, but they they ask us to recommend. Yeah, recommend, recommend, right? To them. They, but if they you don't if you don't process the paperwork and it gets lost three times. It's kind of like defeating the process of having an applicant come in and, and do the work. I don't know if you're accusing me of losing No, not accusing. Work. I know I you're in a transition. Received, no, no, I'm not in any transition. No, I no, when you first got here. application in February from Jurgen Keller. One. After that, I received no other application. So I don't know if it's June and July. Hold on. It's in our office. You guys are always Easy, guys. I was not asked to bring it before the board. That's not my job. I'm not I saying it's your job. Have the application. All right, so here's the thing. The way that this process works. Oh, yeah. Have the applications right here. Yep, it doesn't really matter to me because that isn't, and not that it doesn't matter, but it doesn't come before our board. So the process is that well, as a board, we can make um, a recommendation of somebody that we might want on the board. So as it stands right now, 
there are no openings because um, the selectmen had decided that they wanted to talk to the other two people. Oh, re hold on. Read order the session. We're going to address Mr. Jurgen Kelleher's application for February, I have it, and January dates, I have it, discussion and possible vote on what, you know, is going on. I mean, if any, if you had had this happen to you, you'd be scratching your head saying, what's going on? You have it, but who else has it? Well, um, this got from Sabrina. I got these copies from Sabrina. She got them out for me. So he these are, these are copies the right here. No. The he made applications the and they didn't go forward twice. It just didn't. That has nothing to do with this board. That, and we're not arguing that. That's where I think that the problem is here. Um, who did you pass your application into? I passed mine into the selectmen. Okay. So they should have been Sabrina that did this and they got lost in her office, you're saying? I'm not saying that. You asked me I'm who just I gave saying. my application to. So back to it, I think we're just talking in circles. The obvious is the obvious. I don't think he got due process that uh, he was deserved, Does whether he, he was wanted or not. Well, you here's know? the thing. He, when I got appointed last week, mm -hmm. um, they were, you had asked two other applicants to meet you. You were talking outside because I do remember. I, I didn't them ask them to meet me. I was talking to Jurgen, and the other guy was interested. I said, well, we can't really talk inside the halls, which I believe is true. We can't talk about stuff inside the halls. So I went out to the front okay. and uh, didn't know exactly the time or I was told everything was canceled. So I, again, my bad that I don't understand when things are uh, not posted that I can get my hands on. So again, that was just information Bridget, I didn't have. Was anything canceled? Since the last two meetings. That's why the agenda's on here. You know, it's not something she did. The select been canceled. I'm just Conservation was canceled because we didn't have Oh, the people. conservation meeting was. Yeah, yeah but. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, but when but it's the not. Selectman, what I'm just trying, and again, Rick, I, 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 I'm not even trying to argue your points at all. I'm just really trying to keep. It's very, to me, it's just what, what our jobs, our roles are, are very black and white. And what mm -hmm. you're asking us to agree with or disagree with really isn't, doesn't really matter. It how just we says feel. discussion. Yeah, it is a discussion, and that's what I'm doing. I'm just letting you know that, so what I understand is when anyone's putting in an application to be on a board, it's up to the committee, if they come before us, that we can make a recommendation and then it's pushed upward. And then the selectmen decide if they want to appoint that person or not. But not every person who does put in an application necessarily get appointed for the, what they're doing. The other night when I got appointed, I was the only one sitting here. There was no other person. So I got up and I got appointed. And you didn't come before this board and you didn't submit your application to No, I, I, I submitted board. mine through so the selectman's office because that is the process. I didn't want to cut you up. interviewed by you guys. You were, weren't you? Are you no, no, she, she gave she a statement no. as a, as a um, observer but and you would ask I about. I was just a community member that but, night. Yeah. But we recommended at the meeting that when we, when, we, when we talk to these two gentlemen, we recommend it upstairs. So once it gets upstairs, well, the I think is this it's out of our hands. We had with the board of uh, mm -hmm. office, not this board, because this mm -hmm. board has no jurisdiction over the process of right. volunteer applications. Right. I so when you're getting, I, Rick, I feel like you're getting upset at me I'm and not the upset. board. I'm not upset at all. Because you feel like we didn't do something that you feel like we should have done. I was given Jurgen's application, and I was not directed by our chair at the time yeah. to put him on our agenda, ever. And Jurgen did not submit his application to the Board of Selectmen, so it sat in a folder. That's all well, I can tell you. Give it to the selectmen. Um, because that's not what I was instructed to do by our chair. Right, and, and I understand that whole process, and I understand that we're moving forward. And but it's like right here on the that whole Hold on, that whole meeting, um, to me, never actually constituted a meeting. Um, it was basically, I came in, you threw the stuff on the desk. I didn't have my one hour knowledge of anything. And I am disabled handicapped learning. As everybody knows, when I got on this board, uh, I speak well, don't try to have me spell something. So I felt that that was a real fast boom, boom of information and as far as running a meeting, I think everybody ran that piece of the meeting themselves and the board uh, 
it's, uh, if you look at that, it's a, it's a shambles, and that's why we're trying to fix it. Yeah, all right, so is that, and this is one thing that I feel that we can agree on, is that perhaps that there were some mistakes along the way, and not because they were done on purpose, it's just learning the processes, how to run a meeting, how to do it successfully, so we all, as board members, look professional, and you know we're representing ourselves in the best light that we can for the town of Pembroke. Absolutely. Right? Perfect. So we're all on the same page with that. That's what our goal is here. All I know is when it comes to applications, just, I mean, for Mr. What's his name again? Gergen? How do you say his name? Gergen. 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 It's Mr. a tough Gergen, one. <laughs> I do feel bad that perhaps maybe he feels slighted. I don't want, I don't think that any of us should feel that we did anything as a board or a town to purposefully slight him. Okay, but it does say right on this application, which is why I mm -hmm. went directly to Sabrina. Yeah. It says right here, all appointments remain at the discretion of the selectmen. These decisions are made by them. So that's why when I had my application, I brought it there. So unfortunately for him, he, he maybe, um, and I don't know who was on the board before, if he gave it to a previous secretary or whatever. Rachel, it seems wasn't, it seems to me, I've literally been on this board a day. <laughs> everything I've needed has come through. You know, everything was so organized tonight. I mean, you guys are really lucky that you have that. Uh, are you handicapped, learning, disabled? Um, actually, I'm asking just because I am, and it's a real challenge to do My things daughter, that are out of out yeah. of like you know whack, like a 30 down here and a 40 up there. And so we're going to work on that because you know. I I agree that things are, and that's one of the things when I came here tonight, and um, I I was accused of having um, an executive set, not even an executive, what were you calling it? <laughs> like a meeting outside of. Just first of all, there's seven people on the board. You need four people there's in order for that to now. happen. What's that? There's only five right now. No, seven. there's seven people on this board oh, because. Right, you're right because the selectmen did not accept the resignation. Right. Yeah. So we have seven people on this board. So I came in here this evening, there were three of us in there. We were not doing anything outside of any type of- I didn't say that. I didn't say you were doing it, it just you, looked like you were. You insinuated. So, and I'm just trying he to- said it looked, He said what it looked it like, looked that's suspicious. all. It looks suspicious, I understand that. I wanted to understand why your agenda looks the way it does. That's all. I just wanted to come here and, 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 and understand it. So I think with him, he needs to get this application in front of the selectmen. I believe he did because he spoke the other night. Right. So right now, just so we know as board members, I just want to speak, finish this one thing. We now have five that are active. We have two that, well, seven that are really active, two that want to resign. The selectmen did not accept that. From what I heard the other night, Ed Thorne wanted to talk to those other two members. I don't even know who they are to see if they would consider coming back onto the board. How, I mean, how would everybody feel about that? Is that a good thing, a bad thing? What, what is I that? I think it's not our business. It's a select persons, as you just said. If it you want to go that, you have to pick one or the other, though. We can't have two standards. No, I you agree. Know? So I, I just don't know, was there I, I just, again, I, I, if I was a person trying to volunteer and I had certain things to bring to the table and I brought them to the table, and I did what everybody else does. I look for a referral from the board before it goes to the select person. That's maybe I'm wrong, but that's what I always thought happens. That's what happened to me. How did you do it? You, mean a you came in here first and got a reference, right? Then we I went to the select person. I don't, so I don't remember either of you coming before the board. I don't think <coughs> I did. Yeah, I, you I did. did. No, I, I gave a little speech in and what I bring, and that was it. It was real simple, informal. Right. And it's again, my point is just being fair to all applicants. All applicants, regardless of how you feel about them or the way they look or what they believe in, should have the right to come before. And I don't think they're wasting their time when they spend seven meetings here waiting to get in the, you know, to, to see and what happens. And I just happens. want to clear up, too, that I don't think that under any circumstances, any town employee or selectman or anybody ever judge anybody on the way of their appearance on the way of anything. So I'm not I just saying want to say that. I'm not saying they did. I'm saying well, it I'm shouldn't just, happen. You brought it up, but what you they know? believe in. So I really don't think that that's a fair assessment. I the processes are in the hands of the selectmen right now. But I assure you, I voted for the guys that are upstairs, and I can't imagine that any one of them would ever judge anybody uh, on I, what they look like. From what I know, the process is that you got to recommend from the board and then it goes upstairs. That's you do not. The board does not have to make a recommendation. I'm not saying they had to. That's not I, I thank you. And yeah. 
That's exactly my point. I'll but just you leave can. It. I'll leave it there. But you can make a recommendation. Right. The board, the board of selectmen can ask because they did ask on Mark Soysha. 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 They kicked it. He kicked him down. They said, the board, you know, rec what do you recommend? Them? So they sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. But that's their prerogative. That's and it's not their ours. job to decide who they feel is going to best represent these boards. This board, ZBA, planning, well, planning, they all get voted in. But any single board we have, you, you, know, you guys are on other boards, right? So yep, obviously absolutely. they have a lot of confidence in you because you're sitting here. So that's this is the good news. Well, I hope. <laughs> and they, no one made a, a characterization based on any way of, well uh, how know, does it read though you can say way. all those words and things but if you paint a picture of this and but a picture not. being worth a lot I let, mean let's not paint any picture you know? let, let the guys upstairs make a decision on what they want to do because I don't think it's up to us to paint any picture I, I don't want to make assumptions that it's something that was done that wasn't I think if there, are, if, the if there are openings on the board and everybody's looking to um, fill the board um, it should be it should be posted that they're looking for places. I think that's the start. Just right recently. Now, if you go online. Just recently. Um, okay, that's good. So no. we're on track. And exactly, we're on track. I agree with you. Exactly, that's what we're and trying to get we're done here. Absolutely, I'm so glad we're all on yeah. the same page. We're trying to move forward and be, um, you know, all working I, I, towards I think the same this thing. is the, what it is, and I would hope that if I had, I was coming before a board and they. It was an opening that I would be treated fairly and that I would at least get uh, no thank you or maybe later, just not but he, see he, you later. He may. No, he has not been denied. So just so we know. Nor has he been. Um, there are no spots. That's, so that's in, all design. Okay, so I agree with you. Mr. Thorne is, um, he, I, I saw at the selectman meeting uh, last week, a week ago today, he said that he was going to make a conversation with the two members who are no longer on the board to see if they would consider coming back. And that was um, no, that was a request made by Arthur Boyle, and it was second, I believe, by a Mr. Who, who made the second on that. Anybody remember? Didn't watch the meeting. You didn't watch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was all. That was all done. As you uh, say. Stone. I think Mr. Yeah. Stone actually seconded that. So. I think once Mr. Thorne makes a decision, um, if once Mr. Thorne uh, speaks with those two members, we'll have a decision. If they come back, then there are no spots available. If they do not, then there will be two spots available. And we have two applicants right now, and if anybody else in the town is interested, they too can yeah. put in applications, right? That would be the way to go in my book. Perfect. And okay, then, move it. So I there, there is still that opportunity. They just missed it the other day because they were outside rather than in here. Well, a lot of things happen in this town hall. I, the, um, I hate to ask this, but can we move on? Yes. Oh, I was just going to suggest it. Quarter of four comes off yeah. early in the morning. Yes. Okay, so discussion and possible vote on investigating the chemical pits. I don't know what this is all about. On West Elm Street? Yeah, d down below the Ford site, um, it's an 18th century cesspits that were open, and the place burnt over, and uh, it, it's just... The whole North River is a mill district, um, had fireworks and, you know, lots of other chemicals upstream. But the, the lowest mill was that site, and there are a few pits in there. And when walking through there, when you're doing the electrolysis fishing for the shad and the sea run trout that come up there, which are uh, now uh, not so popular, they're declining, one of the uh, fisheries commissioners looked at it and said do you know what these are because we're walking on rubber land it's like a moonwalk when I was a kid we used to call it the moonwalk you run there and you bounce up and down and it's literally the ground goes up and down this much and you bounce around like the moon but that's all fun as a kid but what is there what's under there these flood over and rip through the bank and deposit whatever's in there into the river nobody has ever looked into it as far as I know but rubber mills are known for toxic waste solvents and a lot of nasty stuff and I just think we owe it to the citizens of Pembroke you know the North River Commission maybe if it's a problem would get involved give us money and work on this maybe cap them I don't know what they would do but I think not to look into it is is a real problem it, it's been there for years and you just go down there and walk around you'll understand this r rubber land mm -hmm. the sizes of this room 
uh, cesspits that were just overflowing with burning rubber and, and solvents and God knows what else. And I think we need to investigate that. Well, I think you're using terms that you aren't sure that there was solvents or all that. I said they were known I mean, for. And I, I have friends that work in the rubber mill still, and they come home black from head to toe. And to this uh, particular rubber mill in 41. Well, I think that uh, this one would be worse because it's no regulations and just finding out what's there. I don't see why anybody would not want to see what's there if you walk on the property. I think everybody should go walk on the property and maybe take a video and take a look at it. What would be the next steps in doing something? Because I'm just 21 trying to... A 21E and a hazardous waste. Right. Uh, so I just... Right. All. And across the town and all of them... Hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, but that's where they have sites that they give funds to to clean up. And this being on the North River, one of the most basic, beautiful rivers in this part of the country, I feel it would be negligent if not looked into. Okay. Then how come, because I've been through it with the North River Commission, Yeah. why haven't they sent somebody out? It's within 50 feet of the river. Well, a lot of so things So why are. haven't they sent somebody out? Um, have you brought it to their attention? Is it, is well, it, hold on, wait a minute. Isn't our jurisdiction actually the same as theirs at this no, point? That's Off, not what the, we were told. River. No, no, no. Not your ability to do things, but actually jurisdiction to protect things there, not anything else. They supersede our, our protection area. So, so I think it's admirable that you want to try to... Uh, I think it's more than admirable. I, I really think this is something, again, we start to realize again where something that's obviously should be looked into we're like trying to go around and, and not do it i but think I do it through the proper is, authorities i don't know that that is our job to do that that's um, what um that's i mean you know that maybe we should look up conservation and see what it says on on the actual meaning of the word maybe we should look at the uh, and then state, there's the law right and then there's the law that's right i agree and so also in the town law says that these sort of things are believe under the Board of Health. Any chemical yeah. thing is under the Board of Health, not the conservation. Board of Health is number one in the line. Right. Well, this is good. See, now we've washed our hands of it and we can put it in the appropriate basket to I get some wash attention. Our hands of anything. No, I'm just I'm saying, no, no, I'm just saying, we put it up the ladder, okay, have different terminology. Now, since we've discussed it, and we're learning about the processes that it would take and involvement to do this project yeah. and who would be doing it. I think as shepherds, to this process, we'd be negligent if we didn't help shepherd this thing through. So we don't know what's there, I so think I think... First of all, samples of the water adjacent to these pits in the river to find out if there is, in fact, any leakage of any kind in it, because sometimes well, <laughs> you can cause more problems than I, you can... I, I, I absolutely understand that. We need to hire somebody to find that out. No, That's, we don't need to hire. Well, it, we, we need to... Somebody rec needs to hire. I mean, okay, so again, to paid. shepherd this forward, not just not deal with it i think we as individuals or commissioners as fisheries or conservation and or uh, contacting the authorities above us again where we don't have a remedy at this table i think the common thing of decency would be put it up the ladder and get it some attention Rachel, that's all i have to say Exactly what our roles and responsibilities are in this for, type of setting. Um, as you know, being on a board, um, because my understanding is that we are here to um, you know look at the hearings, find evidence, and, and you know sort of be here for the community. I I think that all these things again, I think that they're I think they're great. We want to protect our environment and everything, but I'm just not sure if that's what our role is here, and that perhaps maybe that's another. Like maybe that's a, um, a think, subcommittee of what we do that or something. Um, I think it needs to be put up the flagpole and find out you know, who's actual. So perhaps from now on when these things, when you're finding these things and you're out, you know, coming across these things or looking for them or whatever it may be, um, uh, maybe perhaps the place to start would be to ask the selectmen who, who does this fall to rather than get, because I feel like I can definitely sense your frustration, and I don't want it to be with us. I just want us to do what our I walk out the door, is. I leave it behind either way. Yeah, me too. You yeah. I, I mean, and I, like I said, here, I just want us all to be on the same page, but maybe 
if these things come across your path, rather than making them a big, you know, forum here, maybe you bring it's, them up to the not selectmen and ask them, where should I go with this? Because maybe it does go directly to Board of Health. And then you won't be frustrated with us. I'm not with frustrated with anybody. I'm frustrated with that. I said certain times when we are right and we do the right thing, we re are refused help. And then you have to go above that. And then once you do that, it's like, oh, you went above and you, you jumped the gun and all this stuff and that. I would like to say this, can I'll close it on this one, with this particular item. Not to forward information or to help in finding out what is there in any way we are able to do so, as even in shepherding this. Uh, for me to call myself a conservationist, I have to have a certain conscience of mind here with nature. And that's if that's a problem, then that's going to be a problem that goes on because I, that's who I speak for. Some people do speak for the trees, the fish, the land, the air, and that's part of conservation. And part of our duties in certain specific times to take actions about people that don't do. And if they get upset about that, that's not by design of me or anybody, it's for the system. Mm -hmm. Don't shoot the messenger, is what I'm saying. I absolutely am not. I clearly just asked Rachel if we could just get And I agree 100% with you. It would be negligent for us not to find out what to do about some it. Some sort of just so we know <coughs> which way, if these types of concerns come up, that we just as a board know which way we should direct. Do we notify a different agency? You know, protocol so that we don't butt heads and we know what we're doing, I think would be excellent. Move to close. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Perfect. Great. Great meeting, guys. Don't leave until you've signed. Sign. I got to sign, yeah. I got to sign. Yes. Back to you. Thank you.